Live from the Panera Studios, it's the Reading with Robin show, brought to you each week by my friends at Panera Bread, where it's food as it should be. It's where I go to begin my day. There's nothing like that first cup of coffee in the morning. It's also where I go to meet up with friends, and sometimes I even run into a book club. Panera is the perfect place to host a meeting. Everyone's happy with their extensive menu, from the delicious soups and salads to the sandwiches and flatbreads. And don't forget the takeout. The summer months are coming, and who wants to cook? You can order ahead, and your dinner will be waiting for you. That's all at your local Panera Bread. And now, enjoy the show. Happy Pub Day to the Awkward Age. It's Francesca Siegel's gorgeous new novel, and I am so excited to have her on Reading with Robin to talk about it today. Francesca is an award-winning writer and journalist. Her first novel, which I loved beyond The Innocent, won the Costa First Novel Award, the National Jewish Book Award for Fiction, many other prizes. It was long listed for Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction, and out now. I was so excited to know there was a new book when this gorgeous galley arrived, The Awkward Age. Francesca Siegel is precise and funny, and The Awkward Age is brimming with keen observations of the highest order, the clever, the sore, and the sublime. That from Emma Straub, and Francesca will be at Books Are Magic on the 22nd. (laughs) You're in conversation with Jamie Attenberg at Emma Straub's store, Books Are Magic, on the 22nd. I am so bummed not to be in New York next week. Welcome to Reading with Robin, Francesca Siegel. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited that we've gotten all that sorted out. So that's going to be a huge night, at, at, and it's a brand new store, and it is just gorgeous. And I mean, having a book person like Emma and her husband, but having book people run a bookstore truly is magical. Wow, that's going to be a big night. It's the dream, really, isn't it? I'm so excited to see the new bookstore, and I've been kind of cheering for it from across the Atlantic, so I'm excited to actually oh, see it in person. That is real. Well, if you can make it from across the Atlantic, I should be able to get back to New York just one more time. I've been a lot, and there's a lot coming up, but whenever there's something big happening, who wants to miss that? And so that is really exciting. And happy Pub Day. The book is out in the UK, but it's out just now. Here for everybody, the awkward age, I, and like I said in the intro, when it arrived, I just was so excited because Riverhead puts out the very best, and I knew that this would be one of those books that it's like full-on reading with Robin alert, do not miss the awkward age, and it's got a different cover than the UK version, right? Yeah, it's a totally different cover, and actually I love both covers, but they're really different. They are really different, and I always um, um, it's always interesting to me when they do that, and they are both, they represent the book in different ways and both fabulous, so it's sort of like choosing between children, and in fact, there's a lot of that in this book, so it's like another, <laughs> right, another tie-in, and it is laugh out loud funny, and the... The, the, you know, the descriptions, the conversation, and, and the subtle nuances of brilliance pop out at me. And I'm like, I just, I mean, I did. I love The Innocent so much. And I was really, I don't know, when did that one come out? Was that just? Uh, 2012, I think. Okay, so just so, that, yeah, that's no wonder I was like, yay, a new book by Francesca Ziegler. Yeah, it's been a little while. And in fact, wonderful things are worth the wait, but I remember also posting about this, and Jamie Brenner was so excited. Um, she's written The Forever Summer was her last book, which I loved, and she said, oh, my God, there's a new one out by, Fr-, you know, and it was so, it, you know, what's that like as an author to know that your readers are just so excited for your new books? It's it's pure joy. It's you know it's it's one of the greatest parts of this job is knowing that you're touching people and and five years is you know it's not a long long time but it's maybe that longer than publishers hope for, I was, for you. So. <laughs> I was going um, to say right. How does that go? Sometimes is there uh, I don't know what the deadlines are and the timelines and what's promised, but you know it, you wanted to tell the story you wanted to write and you know there's a life happens too so right and that's the thing i wanted to get the book right and then no nobody was putting any pressure on me but it's very <laughs> it's it's incredibly moving and gratifying to know that there are readers there who you know who remembered the first book and are excited about the second so so yeah it's a big day i'm excited so exciting and so what's the story that you wanted to tell you know set it up a little bit for the reading with robin audience the things that you wanted to convey in the story as a 
storyteller and you know it's it's entertaining and it's just this incredible page turner well that's really really lovely to hear i think it was it was a collision of two things i think i mean originally what i've sort of started playing with i got excited about the idea of writing or rather i got sort of drawn into the idea of writing a, a love story between a mother and a daughter. That was really mm. kind of the relationship that I wanted to explore in this book. And so that was something I was thinking about for a while. So, and then I read this article about blended families. Um, and it mentioned that um, it's actually quite common for teen stepchildren um, in new blended families to start romantic relationships. And I was initially sort of startled by that. And then suddenly thought, you know, that actually makes perfect sense because you know, you have all the traditional trappings of teenage sort of life. You have the hormones and the insecurity and the anxiety. And then you add to that the fact that, you know, it's a new blended family. People, feelings are running high. The teenagers might be feeling like they've lost their place a little bit in the family or they're getting less attention. Um, and I suddenly thought, you know, actually that dynamic is such a rich, complicated, tragic, funny setup. <laughs> Um, and the two things kind of came together. I thought, you know, the, the, that intensity of a mother and daughter relationship when, when you have an only child and a single mother yeah. is such an incredible sort of almost a mini marriage between the two of them. And then to disrupt it with these strangers, you know, the mother falling in love, bringing a new partner and his family to live with them when it's been just mother and daughter for five years, as is the case in my novel. That's a huge, huge you know, that's an earthquake, really. Absolutely is, and add to it all of the dog, which we won't talk about. I was like, not the, the dog. You know, I always think not the dog, and and we actually have a corgi. So there's a mention in the beginning oh. of the book when the dog yes. Mole is oh, his name. Yes, Mole, the corgis yeah. get a shout, and I thought, you know, there's there's so much I loved about this book, but when you see added to that dog love, it it just takes the book to another part of the stratosphere of of. <laughs> of what I love to read. And I'm speaking with Francesca Siegel. Her gorgeous novel is out today, The Awkward Age. You can find her at FrancescaSiegel.com, on Instagram, on Twitter, Facebook, every place. And you can find her in Brooklyn on the 22nd at Books Are Magic in conversation with Jamie Attenberg, who I also am such a huge huge fan of Jamie's and at Emma Straub Beautiful Bookstore. So it's like a triple win and so much book passion will be exuded from the stage, I can only imagine. And that's the thing about reading a book that is that you can connect with so deeply from page, well, page, I mean, I forget what the expletive was on page, sentence one, page one, I was like, you roped me in, in like one sentence, I'm like, love this book. Well, loved it just because I knew it was yours before I read it, but then reading it, loved it. As you're talking about blended families, and that is a reality, and whenever I've seen, you know, you always wondered with the Brady Bunch what was going on with those kids, right? I mean, this, right. <laughs> it started a long time ago of wondering what the attractions would be, and you, like you said, teenagers, hormones, just totally disrupting the mother-daughter dynamic, and also for children to realize that their parents are still people and continue. I think there's a line from the um, James' son, Nathan, about parents, like, stopping all sexual activity at seven, uh, 40, at 70, at 40 right. or something. Like, you don't right. even want to sort of think about that. What were some of the other things you sort of wrestled with in the various relationships of the people in this book? I would love to see this. I don't usually say this because who doesn't want a book to be film, and then you want it to be what you want it to be. But I can only right. imagine – right, all of these like, casting this, which I also don't ever do. But in this, it just would be one of, like, those awesome indie films with a higher budget that I know I would love, that kind of movie. Well, um, I'm keeping my fingers crossed in that case. That would be wonderful. Um, yeah. yeah, and I think you, you hit on something that was really one of the big, um, sort of one of my big preoccupations writing this book, which was that kind of tension between – um, parenthood and personhood you know mm -hmm. how much how much are is one entitled to be a person when one is also a mother and that's a sort of semi facetious question um, because obviously sure. one remains a person but there's a sort of expectation certainly or well, certainly from one's children that one ceases to be a person mm -hmm. and um, and I think that tension between um, sort of honoring her own so I'm speaking about the mother now Julia honoring sure. her own needs 
and also sort of taking care of her daughter's needs. And when those two things run into conflict, how, how challenging and painful that can be. Um, and I think, you know, I think this is something that parents have to navigate, even in relationships where they share their children. There is always a tension between prioritizing you as a couple um, and the needs of the children. But I think it's just exacerbated, you know, when you're, to, when you're not parenting the same children. Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I think mean, that tension... As you were saying that, I was thinking on a good day, under the best of possible circumstances, it's tricky and all of this, but add to it a new relationship and one parent not wanting to parent the other's child or saying, you know, misstepping or what you would do with your own child versus that line that you're straddling. And in one part of the, uh, in one instance in the book, James is sort of thinking guiltily, I guess, about preferring his own children. Right, right. All and who these. wouldn't? Like, of course you'd prefer your own kids because they're your kids. <laughs> if we're being honest about it, <clears throat> maybe right. not every day, but – and just knowing where you can st- – you know, which lines you can cross and sharing that story and making this amazing – just like one of these sink into awesome novels. It's one of my favorites. It's a, at the top one of my reading with Robin Picks. This is just the kind of book that I so enjoy and especially – love to share because once I read a book like this and again it was several months ago and then I thought oh I get to share this book on May 16th awesome I mean that's like such a joy of of what I'd like to do there are so many things to talk about and think about and reread there are so many these lines are just one after the other I've got so many of these pages bent back with um pieces that I just so connected to. And they start off where they're going to the family. They're bringing uh, the, the children, each of uh, Julie and James are bringing their children to the States for Thanksgiving. So now you've thrown them into a situation where they're heading into a family holiday. Uh, what was that one like to right. write? Um, oh, it's pure joy. I mean, I think the more kind of uh, – sometimes one can be a bit naughty as a writer. And, you know, you throw your characters <laughs> into an incredibly awkward situation. And, you know, not having to experience the awkwardness oneself, it's just – it's pure pleasure sometimes to be a little bit naughty like that. Kind of. I love that. And the title alone and certainly all of the awkward ages that we that we pass through and continue to find ourselves in – this is the perfect title. Were there others, or was this just like you knew this was going to be the title for the book? Um, I am not good with titles, as my publishers will attest. I um, <laughs> find them excruciating. Um, and but so we were looking for a little while. There were no other serious contenders, or certainly not alternatives that I can offer. But um, but when I found this one, and it's a Henry James title, even though the novel itself has nothing to do with the Henry James that shares its name but um I just I saw it and I thought you know it's awfully cheeky to steal a Henry James title on the other hand this title is so perfect <laughs> I um, love that I, I have to I have to um and I just as you said I thought it worked so well because I think there's this sort of myth that that kind of awkwardness and uh, that kind of having an awkward stage is the preserve mm-hmm. of teenagers. And, of course, that isn't the case at all. You know, there is, it's not like we kind of graduate from our teens and become a perfectly formed whole human being who knows ourselves and knows our, who we are and what we need and what we stand for. Um, you know, I think sort of all periods of transition are complicated and awkward and messy, whether that's kind of making a new household, getting married, having children, becoming a parent – um, losing a spouse as Julia does or then you know putting together a family menopause later you know there's an older couple in the book also and and I, I thought it was important to kind of explore the, the reality that there are multiple awkward ages. It's perfect that's the thing about this title because I did realize that when I was sort of googling around I thought hmm I bet that's where that's from but it's so perfect on so many levels and there's so many times when whether in a book or movie show whatever it is and you look at these different periods of life and and I often said we rarely progress much past those years it's sort of like high school is never over that sort of thing I mean depending on how much work one has done that is a very meaningful age and there are so many instances where you could say, oh, that is how someone reacted 40 years ago. It doesn't really change that much. Right. You, we hope to evolve past that. But so, and 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 watching the teenagers manage their relationship, and, and again, we never give too much away on Reading with Robin. Don't get nervous. The Awkward Age is out just now. This is not a book club. No worries. And I'm chatting with Francesca C. 
Siegel, but there is that idea of um, watching those same sort of scenarios maybe play out with all of the adults in the book in different ways. And you've created so many charming characters, and it's not fair, of course, to ask you to pick a favorite. So who would your favorite in the book be? <laughs> um, I'm very fond of um, – so I'm very – Gwen is the is Julia's daughter. Gwen is a mm-hmm. teenager. I'm very fond of Gwen's grandparents. Yeah, charming. They, they, Iris and Philip are. I one shouldn't pick favorites. On the other hand, if I had to, I think they would be exactly near the top. I love it. Yeah, very funny and <laughs> a little bit of Yiddish sort of thrown in there. And yeah, it, always, always. I love to check in a bit of Yiddish. You can just feel the love, and so their relationship. So they are Julia's in-laws she's lost her husband so but they're you know so they've got to watch her navigate this new relationship in fact her father-in-law right. has introduced her in 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 some sort of way to james via yeah. pa- piano lessons but still you know you're setting something up i don't know or what the intention was or if we need to know that but you, you feel responsible and i don't know sense of loyalty to your to your child who you've lost and wanting your daughter-in-law to go on and have a family and there's a lot of bittersweet in this book yeah absolutely well that's you know it's uh Life, Gwen's grandparents it. so as you said these are Julia's um first t- Julia's husband died five years ago and she's still very close with the parents um and that means that they are having to spend time and make a forge a relationship with this new man James that she's moved in um together with his new family um, so yeah, and that's that must be extremely mixed, as you said, extremely bittersweet. They've lost their son, but they also they want his wife to carry on with her life. They want his daughter to, you know, to be happy and thrive and move forward. So, so yet uh, not, not more awkwardness forward. ensues, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the awkwardness <laughs> continues. And I'm speaking with Francesca Siegel. Visit her website at francescasiegel.com. The Awkward Age is out today. Do not miss this book. Put it at the tippy top of your book buying list because you don't want to miss it. If you are in New York or can get there, get to Brooklyn on the 22nd, she will be at Books Are Magic being interviewed in conversation with Jamie Attenberg and at Emma, I will Emma poke herself up onto. The, I don't know how Emma could watch you and Jamie chit chatting and not join in there. I, that's got to be really <laughs> right to sort of stay in the in the background of that. I I gotta think that would be. I would pull up a chair, grab a mic, pull up a chair, and join in the fun. So that's happening. <laughs> At Books on Magic on the 22nd at 7 o'clock, right there in Brooklyn. And then, like you said, hopefully to the States in the fall for some more book love because people are going to want to have, you know, people are going to want to talk about this a lot. Are you doing many events in the U.K. now? Um, I've done a few, and then I've got a few more coming up, but um, but I think we're saving saving most of the events in the UK for the paperback. So I've got a little quiet pause here. And also I think there'll be lots of events in the States. Book events to me are just so much fun. And I wish that I could go to all of them. And when they're happening, you know, close enough where I can, or or even as, at a distance, depending on the, the timing, I try and get there because celebrating a book, especially one that is really meaningful and seeing the energy, feeling the energy, and seeing everybody so excited for the author and to share this book, when you're a book uh, when you're a book lover, there's just nothing like that. I really try to get to as many, and when I'm traveling, I like to get to them as well. And we were trying to think where we were. I think it was in Paris when there was an event that we happened upon. I couldn't like contain myself, you know. So if I'm abroad and oh, there's an wonderful. event, yeah, it's so much fun. And which are some of your favorite bookstores in the UK? Um, I love, I've got a couple of local bookstores that I absolutely love. So I love the Primrose Hill bookstore. Um, mm-hmm. That's a family run bookstore that's been there forever. It's on uh-huh. Primrose Hill High Street. It's beautiful. Um, and there's almost always a member of the family knocking around for oh, a good, love it. Uh, wow. a good Um So that's lovely. Um, and there's also Joseph's bookstore, which is in um, Temple Fortune in North London. Mm hmm. Um, which is a lovely independent bookstore with a very lovely cafe next to it and always has like a very nice um, warm atmosphere in there. Um, and and Daunt Books, which is um, a chain but a small chain, um, mm-hmm. and I have two very close to me. 
Um, well, that's so it's neat. Fantastic book. So that's, uh, it's it's nice to have those recommendations because people travel and they want to know. I know when I travel, that's one of the things. You know, we sort of plan trips around where the bookstores are and when they're. <laughs> Because, right, you don't want to miss anything. And then there's that, well, okay, we're here. I might already have this book. I'm not sure, but I need it. And then, of course, you have to pack it. But there's there's just something so soothing, welcoming about just walking into one of these well-loved shops. And then, Yeah, it's just like know, going home, isn't it? It's like going it, home. it is. And, and then you just meet people and you're chatting and everybody's chatting books. And that's, that's the beauty also of the events. And so you've got all of these people, these like-minded people in this one space. And the titles are flying and people want to share their favorites. And, and then there's the, I don't know if you ever get this, but when somebody will say to you, I can't believe you haven't read such and such a title. I mean, do you get that? And and how can you possibly read everything? Because, of course, you can't. But people love to sort of stump the author, stump the book person, I guess. Oh, yeah, absolutely. (laughs) And and that's one of the reasons, actually, why I love um, touring in the States a little bit is that, you know, people are reading different things. Ah. I'm in London at the moment, but people are reading different things here and there. So you get kind of slightly different recommendations, which is always really exciting. Which ones are hot right now in London that you'd like to share? Or what's a book that you've read recently or is at the top of your pile um, to read next? The, everybody here is talking about the new Elizabeth Strout. Yes. Here too. Like okay. We're on round. the same page. Um, okay. So then so it's sometimes the same. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the same page here. But, yeah, the the new uh, Anything, is, Anything is Possible, is that the title? Yes, which Elizabeth I haven't Strout. yet read, but I will. Yeah, it's really good. So that's a good one. And uh yeah, it's but there are different titles, of course. You just happen to pick one. That's also very popular here. But I'm sure you'll go home with many goodies when you are at Books Are Magic because how can you not? And back to the awkward age for a moment. What are some of the I mean because certainly characters remain in our hearts after we we hit the end, but I always like to ask, which are some of the hopes and dreams you have for, you know, just pick out a few of, of your favorites? Yeah, I've, I, you know, I was working on the book for, for a number of years, and, and these characters are have been with me that time, and I'm I'm fond of them. And I think the other thing that I really wanted to, that I felt strongly about with writing this book was that I wanted to write a book about fundamentally good people, mm-hmm. um, and that they might be people who do stupid things sometimes and who hurt each other and and you know it's a sort of cliche to say that we hurt the ones we love but um but I think that is really kind of very much embodied in this book in lots of ways but that it's fundamentally good kind people who make mistakes and attempt sort of to varying degrees to rectify them um but that meant that I'm sort of really fond of all of them in different ways um and and I miss the world of this book actually I could have sort of Sorry, I was really sorry to leave them. As for what happens after the final page, I, I think that's kind of, I think that's up to my readers almost. I know. that's It's a truly impossible question, especially because we can't give anything away. But I always wonder, especially when a book is so meaningful and, and you do sort of, you have to think about it. I mean, because I also think about these books because I'm then talking about them. And in sometimes sharing details of a book where, you must read this book, that kind of thing. I go through it in my head and think, oh, yeah, that Gwen or James or, like you say, the grandparents and certainly the dog. People and <laughs> the things that are meaningful, they do continue on. But if, but certainly that idea of, like you say, it may be cliche, but that's because it's true that people are, for the most part, trying to do their best. But they're right. likable people, certainly, and that – everybody's maneuvering and, and navigating some really t- you know difficult stuff and we make choices sometimes that in hindsight we might not make or as we grow but that doesn't make somebody a bad person and so there's a lot of and uh, you've thrown a lot at your characters here which makes it such a great juicy funny deeply thoughtful heartfelt read and it's I, I can't say more about it this is the kind of book that I just love to press into somebody's hands and say you're welcome. <laughs> oh. Enjoy the aw- I'm so honored, I can't tell you. Oh, enjoy the awkwardness of the awkward age and the love that and and all of the light that shines around it. And I'm very excited that it's pub day, getting to speak to you on such a big day and the awkward age yeah. is out and about and again find Francesca on Francescasiegel.com. 
find her on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Which is your favorite of, of all those social media platforms? And That's an interesting question. So I've, well, I've only been on Instagram for a week, so I am an Instagram <laughs> novice. No wonder I just I was thinking, um, is she on Instagram? Yeah, no, I saw that. I didn't realize it was that short, but that's funny. Yeah, no, I've been on Instagram one week. Um, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, I, I'm not a huge social media person. I, I enjoy consuming it rather than contributing it, shall we sure. say, like contributing to it. Yeah. So I read Twitter an awful lot, and I appreciate what other people post. And ditto on Instagram as I'm kind of navigating my way. I'm not an enormous generator of content. Um, but well, well that's Maybe as I learn my way around, that will change. <laughs> Absolutely. That's the thing. You can grow with it and you can do as much or, you know, lurk or share or do whatever, however. That's, right. That's I'm a lurker. Easier. That's exactly. I'm, I'm currently a lurker, but I'm, I'm, I'm open to. <laughs> you aspire to do, to do other, to be a lurker and to. Uh, right. Exactly. To lurk and to share. And, but one of the great things about the, when a book comes out is, reading what people are writing and sharing it and or regramming it on Instagram and there's so many ways to to spend the time that you want on these platforms because otherwise it just sucks the life out of you but it is you know certainly when right. books come out and I love being available to readers that's one thing that I'm really excited about is engaging mm -hmm. in people like I'm, I'm open to conversation rather than I might not be like out there kind of initiating huge numbers of posts but I really love hearing from people so that's one of the exciting things about the social media platforms is that it is a, it is a great leveler and it does mean that people can find you in in a nice way very easily and tell you what they think and you know it's that's a really uh, that's a magical thing actually I think it really is and I encourage readers all the time and you're tuned into reading with Robin I'm chatting with Francesca Siegel her brand new novel The Awkward Age is out today and I encourage people to post things on whether it's Amazon or Goodreads or tweet retweet take pictures and just share these books that you love because there are so many ways to connect with readers on on all on both sides and you hear from your readers and you get to and and people are so excited to get a response and to know that somebody is enjoying what they've written about the book or all of that so it it is really an amazing community and that's to me the best way to sort of share it because it can get you know incredibly obsessive <laughs> addictive and yeah and all of that, but on its good side, it's just such a, um, like you say, magical way to uh, immediately connect with somebody or to have a thought about a book. And sometimes I like to tweet, and there are a few from this book that don't give anything away that I will be tweeting some of the quotes that I especially love. Oh, and fantastic. So much on so many of these pages that I thought, you know, I was like, okay, this is not an English class. I'm not writing a paper about this, but I could. It was just that. Um, <laughs> I would love to read that paper. I I would love to write it. I would love to just sit down and write it because there's the the little hidden jewels of the the jokes and the um, there was something about McDonald's nuggets in there that I just thought was so funny and and this passive um, purchase at McDonald's at the at the airport or something like that where you know James was like I just thought that was so so fun is so many parts that were just so funny and it like I said it opens just and grabs you right in and it's gorgeous it's out today it's the awkward age and Francesca Siegel congratulations on big pub day and have the best time at books or magic Thanks. if I can steal away I just may show up so thank you so oh much. we'd love you we'd love to have you I would love to be there forget Emma pulling up her chair I just like to do it myself <laughs> Something like I'll make space for you myself. on stage, I promise. Oh, thank you. I would really love that. And thank you very much for your time. This was really a lot of fun, and I am very excited to share The Awkward Age. Like I said, reading with Robin, full-on alert. This is one of my top picks, and I'm actually working on my column for top summer picks, and this one's on it. So that may come before the, the essay I'm going to write which I will never write. Let's be honest, Francesca. Never write in that essay, but it would be really good if okay. I did. <laughs> Thank I you so much. I hold my breath. Right. Okay, yeah, please don't. Thank you very much for appearing on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. It's been such a treat. I've really, I've loved it. Thank you.